Hi, in this video, we will discuss about the reverberation time and also the echo. This figure shows the Ford Art Museum at the Harvard University. In the 2D plan, we can see there is a lecture hall inside the museum. There is acoustic problem in this lecture hall where the sound in the hall would persist for 5.5 seconds. Imagine you introduce yourself by saying, I am Mr. X. We can listen to each word clearly because the sound persists for a very short period. However, in this case, the sound in the hall would persist for 5.5 seconds. It means when you say I, the sound for the I will last for 5 seconds. And then imagine you say the second word, M, it will last for 5 seconds as well. Continue with Mr. X. So this will last for 5 seconds as well. The long duration of the sound is due to the refraction from the hard surface plaster finish materials inside the hall. Imagine the words I mixed with M at this moment and the I am Mr. mixed together or the I am Mr. X all mixed together. So in this case, it will cause the listening very difficult. Therefore, Professor Sabin was asked to solve the sound problem inside the hall. The persistent sound for 5.5 seconds here is also known as the reverberation time. So in this case, this time is too long and the speeds are almost impossible to understand nearly everywhere inside the hall. After the initial investigation, Professor Savin said that the persistence of the refracted sound energy was due to the size of the room and its furnishing, including the occupants. And he called this persistence to be the duration of audibility of residual sound. To avoid influence from the environment noise or the background noise, the test was conducted at night after the streetcar stopped running. So it is around the mid time to 5 am. During these hours, he measured the sound pressure level inside the hall and monitor the change of the magnitude with respect to time. So he can see that the sound pressure level is quite low because the hall is relatively quiet after all the cars stop running. Then he played the organ pipes 60 dB at 512 Hz. So the sound pressure level increased and start to drop. Professor Sabin count the time it took the sound to decay the estimated 60 dB of its initial sound level. From the figure we can see that at this moment, the organ pipe stopped playing. Therefore, the sound pressure level start to decay. And we want to measure from 60 dB decay of the SPL value, how much is the time taken. So this time is called the reverberation time. After the measurement, he found that the reverberation time is equal to 5.5 seconds for the sound pressure level to decrease by 60 dB. In the second testing, he bring in 550 seat cushions which is made by the porous sound absorbing hair fiber material covered with canvas. After he bring in the seat cushion, then he start to play the organ pipes at the same sound pressure level and the same frequency. So he monitor and measure the sound pressure level with respect to time again. So in this case, before the sound was played, it is at the background noise. After the organ pipes is played, then the sound will increase. And after the organ pipes stop playing, the sound will start to decrease and go back to the 
original sound level. So he measured the time taken for the sound to decay the estimated 60 dB of its initial sound level, which means the time taken for the sound pressure level to drop by 60 dB. So in this case, the time is equal to 1 second. From the two testing, Professor Sabin found that he could lower the reverberation time from the original 5.5 second to 1 second by increasing the sound absorption materials inside the hall. From Professor Sabin's experimental work, he success to develop an empirical equation that we can use to estimate the reverberation time. By definition, reverberation time is the time required for the sound to decay 60 dB after the sound source has stopped. V is the room volume, A is the total room absorption. If V and A are in feet cube and the feet square unit, then the coefficient here must be in 0 0.05 second per feet. We use the 0 0.16 constant when the volume is measured in meter cube and the total room absorption is measured in meter square. Make sure you use the correct equation to determine the reverberation time. Since this equation is only examined at 512Hz for the Professor Sabin testing, therefore, this equation is valid only at this frequency. To use this equation, the sound field conditions must be diffuse, which means the sound absorption are uniformly distributed. And also the room dimension must not be very widely. Thanks to Professor Sabin works, it makes the possibility to plan the reverberation time in advance of construction. The total room absorption A is equal to the summation X multiplied with alpha, where we have learned alpha previously. Alpha is the sound absorption coefficient at a given frequency. The range for the alpha is from 0 to 1. If the alpha is close to 1, we say the material has high absorption. of the sound energy. If the alpha is closer to zero, then the material is poor in absorption but good in refraction. S is simply the surface area. For example, imagine we have a rectangular room here. So we have four wall. One, two, three and four and we have one ceiling at the top and one floor at the bottom so let's say the dimension of this room are given which is equal to five o feet multiplied with thirty feet and the height is 10 feet. Then the surface area for the wall is simply equal to 10 multiplied with 30. We have two wall here with the same dimension. Therefore, we need to multiply with 2. Then we continue to find the surface area at this wall and the back wall. So the front wall and back wall has the same dimension which is equal to 10 multiplied with 50 multiplied with 2 wall. We continue for the ceiling. So at the top here, the dimension is 50 multiplied with 30. 
the floor has the same dimension which is also 50 multiplied with 30. So by doing this, you obtain the surface area. Let's say the sound absorption coefficient for the wall is given by 0 0.3 which is the same coefficient at all the wall and for the ceiling the coefficient is equal to 0 0.1 for the floor the sound absorption coefficient is equal to 0 0.2 then we can continue to put the sound absorption coefficient with respect to the respectively wall, ceiling and floor here. So for the floor, since we have the same coefficient, then we can put 0 0.3 inside. For the ceiling, you have 0 0.1 and for the floor, you have 0 0.2 and it's given that the alpha here is measured at 500 Hz so we can continue to find the A which is the room absorption after you compute this you should obtain the surface area for the wall is equal to 1000 600 feet square so the surface area here is in feet square then we can take 1600 multiply with 0 0.3 give you the sound absorption for this four wall after you calculate you should obtain 480 here let's continue to compute the surface area for the ceiling so 50 multiplied with 30, you should obtain 1500 feet square. And you multiply with 0 0.1 to obtain the total absorption at the wall, which is equal to 150. We continue to find the surface area at the floor, which is same with the ceiling, 1500 feet square. And we multiply it with 0 0.2, you should obtain 300 which is the total absorption at the floor. To find the total room absorption, then we need to take the summation of the A at the wall, ceiling and the floor. So 480 plus 150 plus 300, we obtain the A equal to 930. And the unit is in subit. This is the total room absorption. Then we can continue to compute the reverberation time by using this formula where the total absorption is equal to 930 the volume is equal to 10 multiplied with 50 multiplied with 30 the constant is equal to 0 0.05 since we are using the feet as the dimension after we perform the calculation we success to obtain the reverberation time equal to 0 0.81 second. So this is how we calculate the reverberation time. What if we change the question? What if we change the problem here where the dimension is changed to meter? All the alpha is still remain in this problem. So in this case the surface area will be in meter square and after you compute the volume 10 multiply 50 multiply the 30 you should obtain the volume in meter cube so we need to use 0 0.16 when the dimension is in meter and if you recompute you obtain the reverberation time equal to 2.56 seconds these are some equation for us to compute the surface area. So for the rectangular, it's just length multiplied with the width. For the triangle, we take half multiplied with the A dimension here and multiply with the B dimension here. For a half circle, 
the surface area is pi over 2 multiplied with the radius square here. For more complicated shape like this, the equation to compute the corresponding surface area are given here. You should have mastered the method to compute the reverberation time by using the Sabin formula. T equal to 0 0.05 multiplied with V volume divided by the total room absorption. If the room dimension is measured in feet, then we can use this constant. If the room dimension is measured in meter, then we need to change this constant to 0 0.16. The optimal reverberation time are provided in this figure. If the reverberation time of a room is larger, then in this case, the sound impression will be lively, where the sound will persist longer. This is suitable for music application where you see most of them such as the opera, chorus, organ and so on require the reverberation time to have a larger value. Pitch activity in the recording studios, the classroom, lecture and conference room and so on require shorter reverberation time. The impression for shorter reverberation time is deadly where the sound decay rapidly. In the places that involve the speech and music activity such as the auditorium, theaters and so on has a moderate reverberation time. If we want to design a multi-purpose auditorium for example to have a good listening inside the auditorium the reverberation time must be within this limit 1.6 second to 1.8 second the dash section at the ends of the bar is indicating the extreme limit of the acceptability normally a large room has a greater reverberation time which is near the upper end and if you have a small room then it will be located near the end of the lower limit here the optimum value for the reverberation time for the multi-purpose auditorium is within 1.6 second to 1.8 second. However, if you design if you design the auditorium to have the reverberation time within 1.4 to 1.9 second here, it is still acceptable. What if you design the auditorium which has the reverberation time greater than the upper limit here. For example, it is greater than 1.9 seconds. So in this case, the speech or the music inside the auditorium will persist for too long and it will cause the music and speech to be not clear. On the other hand, if you design the reverberation time less than the lower limit here, which is 1.4 seconds, so in this case, the speech and music inside the auditorium will be that full, where the sound decay too rapidly. So we should design the auditorium according to the suggested reverberation time here. By doing this, the audience can listen to a clear speech as well as lively music. The listening condition inside the auditorium will be bad if we design it wrongly like these two cases. If the reverberation time is too high, then we should consider to reduce it by increasing the total room absorption. Similarly, if the reverberation time is too low compared to the recommended time, so in this case, we should increase the reverberation time by reducing the total room absorption. Previously, the optimum reverberation time are given at the mid frequency, which is the average of reverberation at 500 and 1000 Hz. You need to be careful, the optimum reverberation time given in this figure is only valid for the mid frequency. For example, let's say the optimum reverberation time for the multi-purpose auditorium is equal to 1.7 second plus minus around 10 percent 
and you should know that this optimum time is only valid for mid frequency around 500 and 1000 Hz. We can use this information to find the optimum low frequency and high frequency reverberation time. For example, at low frequency around 125 Hz, the optimum time is equal to 1.3 multiplied with the optimum time at mid frequency therefore you should obtain the optimum time at the low frequency equal to 1.3 multiplied with the 1.7 second so the answer should be around 2.21 second the optimum time for the high frequency at 4000 hertz is equal to 0 0.8 multiplied with the optimum time at mid frequency here Therefore, 0 0.8 multiplied with 1.7 give you 1.36 second. So you can see at the low frequency, the optimum time is 2.21 second. At the mid frequency, is around 1.7 second. And at the high frequency, the optimum time is at 1.36 second. If we design a room at non-optimum reverberation time, at high frequency, too much of the reverberation usually means harsh or rasping listening condition. At low frequency, too much reverberation usually sounds boomy, whereas too little sounds real. In this example, we are going to determine the reverberation time for 250,000 feet cube high school last auditorium. The reverberation time will be calculated for full and one half occupancy conditions. This kind of auditorium serves many functions and we must design it with a compromised reverberation time. We can use the previous figure in order to find the optimum mid frequency reverberation time for the multipurpose auditorium. We have discussed previously that short reverberation time usually is desirable for speech activities while long reverberation time is needed for music activity. Instead of choosing the optimum time at the center here, since we have a large auditorium, therefore we choose the optimum time at the upper limit here to be 1.8 second. This represents the optimum time at the mid frequency around 500 Hz. Then we can continue to multiply 1.3 with the 1.8 second here to obtain 2.3 second. So this is the optimum low frequency reverberation time at around 1 to 5 hertz. So we continue to multiply 0 0.8 with the 1.8 second here to obtain 1.4 second. So this is the optimum high frequency reverberation time at 4000 hertz. With that, we success to obtain the optimum time at mid, low, and high frequency to be this answer. Based on the, based on the application, which is the multi-purpose auditorium in this case, we success to obtain the optimum time at low, mid, and high frequency. By using the Sabin formula, we can continue to predict the suitable total room absorption for the multipurpose auditorium. The volume of the auditorium is given by this magnitude previously and the unit is in feet cube where the dimension is in feet. Therefore, the constant of the Sabin formula is equal to 0 0.05 in this case. So we have learned the reverberation time is equal to 0 0.05 multiplied with the volume divided with the total room absorption. Rearrange the formula, you should obtain A is equal to 0 0.05 multiplied with the volume divided with the reverberation time. And we can substitute the reverberation time at 500 Hz inside. And you should obtain the total room absorption to be 6944 subins. So this is the answer. Based on the recommended optimal reverberation time for the multipurpose auditorium, we have success to obtain the required total room absorption at 500 Hz. By substitute the reverberation time at 125 Hz inside, 
you should obtain A is equal to this number and you continue substitute the reversion time at 4000 Hz inside then you should obtain the A equal to this answer. So this is the design based on the optimum value. In this study, a deviation of 10% from the optimum generally will be satisfactory. For example, 2.3 second plus minus 10% is 2.3 plus minus 0.23 second. 5435 subins plus minus 10% is equal to 5435 plus minus 544. By using the similar approach, you can obtain the acceptable range for the 500 and 4000 Hz here. In this example, it shows that prior to construction, we can plan the required total room absorption at various frequency. We can estimate the total room absorption by using this formula. So we need to consider the total surface area and also the sound absorption coefficient for the material that we choose. First of all, let's consider the fully occupied case. The surface area in fit square unit are provided here. The material that cover the respective area are given. In these cases, For example, we use the gypsum board for the ceiling, which has the sound absorption coefficient to be 0 0.15 at 125 Hz, 0 0.05 at 500 Hz, 0 0.09 at 4000 Hz. We have different material at this location and the corresponding alpha value at low, mid and high frequency are given here. Then we can compute the absorption in subins by using this formula. So we take the summation of the surface area multiplied with the alpha. So in this case 8150 is the surface area. You multiply with alpha here, you obtain the absorption in subins unit. So 8150 multiplied with 0 0.15 you obtain this absorption value. So you can repeat the same procedure here. Multiply the surface area with the corresponding alpha. Then you obtain this sound absorption result. So let's continue to find the absorption at 500 Hz. So we take 8150 multiply with 0 0.05. You obtain this value. And you can repeat the same procedure by taking the surface area here and multiply with the alpha at 500 Hz. Then you can obtain the absorption at 500 Hz. Similarly, we can take the surface area multiply with the alpha at 4000 Hz to obtain the absorption at 4000 Hz here. For example, 8150 multiply with 0 0.09 you should obtain the absorption equal to 733.5 subin. The absorption coefficient for the air is 0 for low and mid frequency. However, at high frequency, alpha for the air absorption is not equal to 0. It's equal to 8 subins per 1000 feet cube. In this case, the volume of the auditorium is equal to 250,000 Q. Therefore, the sound absorption of the air at 4000 Hz will be equal to the volume divided by 1000 feet cube and multiply with 8. After you perform the calculation, you should obtain the A absorption at 4000 Hz to be 2000 subin. You need to be careful for this item. In terms of the absorption for the audience, is counted together with the seat. So for the auditorium, there are total 4500 seats. So the unit is not in feet square, but the unit is in unit. 
imagine you have 4,500 seed, therefore the unit will be 4,500 unit of the seed. The alpha at low, mid and high frequency here are per seed or per unit. Therefore, we take 4,500 unit of the seed together with the audience, multiply with 0.39, you obtain the absorption here. One unit of seed together with the audience is equal to 0.8 sabin at 500 Hz. Therefore, 4,500 unit multiplied with 0.8 give you the absorption of the audience together with the seed to be 3,600. Similarly, you take the 4,500 multiplied with 0.87, then you obtain 3,915 absorption at 4,000 Hz. Lastly, we take the summation of all the absorption here to obtain the total absorption to be 5,309.5 sabins at 125 Hz. So if you continue to take the summation of all the absorption here, then the total will be around 7,000 at 500 Hz. Then you continue to take the summation of the absorption here to give you around 9,000 sabins at 4,000 Hz. So this is the result for fully occupied case where all the 4,500 unit of the seat are fully seated. Let's continue with the second case where the auditorium is halfly occupied. The previous calculation here are still remain. In this auditorium, total we have 4,500 seats. If the auditorium is halfly occupied, then in this case, Half of it, which is 2,250, is empty seat and another half will be the seat together with the audience. So the alpha for each seat is given here. When you compare to the empty seat here, you see audience together with seat has higher alpha. Then you can continue, take the 2250 of the empty seat, multiply 0.19 for each seat to be 400 something subits at 125 Hz. So you continue, take the 2250, multiply with 0.56, you should obtain this answer. And take 2250, multiply with 0.59, you should obtain this answer. By repeating the same procedure, you take the number of seats together with the audience here, multiply with the corresponding alpha, then you should obtain the corresponding absorption. So we continue to take the summation of all the absorption at 125 Hz here. So this is the total absorption. Then you continue for the 500 Hz and 4000 Hz to obtain the total absorption at 500 and 4000. So we successfully obtain the total absorptions in Sabins for the fully occupied and halfly occupied case. By using the Sabin formula, we can compute the reverberation time. V is the volume, so you can substitute this value inside, and A is the total absorption, so you can substitute A inside. Therefore, you should obtain the reverberation time to be this answer. By repeating the same procedure for the second case, then you can obtain the reverberation time result like this. Let's compare this result with the recommend value to see if the design is appropriate or not. For example, the reverberation time at 500 Hz is recommend to be 1.8 second plus minus 10%. From here, we know that the reverberation time at 500 Hz should be between 1.62 to 1.98. Then we check the design where your reverberation time when it's fully occupied is equal to 1.7, which is within the range, and the reverberation time 
when it's halfly occupied is 1.9, which is also within the range. Therefore, we say has good sound condition at the mid frequency here. We continue to check the sound condition at 125 Hz here, where the recommended reverberation time is equal to 2.3 plus minus 10%. So with that, we obtain this range. 2.4 is within the range. Therefore, the listening condition when it is fully occupied is good. However, 2.6 is slightly greater than the recommended value. Too high reverberation time will cause the listening to be not clear. So in this case, we should try to reduce the reverberation time within the recommended range. This can be done by increasing the absorption. Similarly, the recommended reverberation time at 4000 Hz is equal to 1.4 second plus minus 10%. So we check the reverberation time when it's fully and halfly occupied to be 1.3 and 1.4 seconds, which is within the range. Therefore, the listening condition at 4000 Hz are good for both cases. In this figure, the relationship between the volume at the x-axis and the recommended reverberation time at the y-axis for various purposes at the mid frequency are given here. So far we have discussed about the reverberation and you must know the difference with respect to the echo. Both reverberation and echo are due to the refraction of sound inside a room. For example in this case, this person is speaking and the receiver is here where he listens to the sound in various paths. So you have the direct path and you also have the refraction path. When the person here say hello, since the direct path is shorter, the sound will reach to the receiver here faster. The sound of hello will reach to the receiver slower through the refraction path one here. So you listen the second word hello due to the refraction. Similarly, you listen to the hello sound again and again which is due to the refraction path 2 and refraction path 3 here. If the time interval between the direct and the refraction sound are more than 0 0.06 seconds, so in this case, we will listen the sound to be echoes. So in this case, the sound of hero will be repeated over the time and you can see each sound appears discreetly and they does not mix with each other. On the other hand, if the time interval between the direct sound and the refraction sound is less than 0 0.06 seconds, our brain cannot differentiate the discrete sound of it. In this case, we will listen to the sound hello with a long tail. This is known as reverberation. We have learned previously that higher reverberation time is great for the music but not for speech. Theoretically, to avoid the echo, time delay gap greater than 0 0.06 seconds or 60 milliseconds should be avoided. To achieve this, we can design the room with proper sound path difference. So this is the formula where we take the refracted path here minus with the direct path here. So in this case, 12 meter is the direct path, we can substitute inside the formula, and the refracted path is 11 plus 18. Together you have 29. 29 minus with 12, you should obtain 17 meter. Please correct the typo here. We know that the speed of the sound travel in the air medium is equal to 343 meter per second. So this will be per second only. Then we can compute the travel time for the refracted sound to be the distance divided by the speed. So 17 divided by 343, you should obtain around 0 0.05 seconds. So previously we obtained the time delay gap to be 0 0.05 seconds which is also equal to 
50 milliseconds. Based on this guideline, we can see it's under this category, where the time delay gap is within 45 to 60 milliseconds. And under this condition, you will have unsatisfied listening condition. From the table, we can see that if the time delay gap is more than 60 milliseconds, then it will cause the listening condition to be poor. This is because echo will happen in this case. If the time delay gap is within 30 to 45 milliseconds, the listening condition will be broke. If we are able to design the time delay gap to be less than 20 milliseconds, it will be excellent for both speech and music. If the time delay gap is within 20 to 30 milliseconds, it's good for speech and satisfactory for music. In this figure, we can see that the sound from the speaker here will hit to the wall and reflect back to the audience. So this is the potential echo zone and we need to identify the time delay gap in order to check whether the listening condition is good or bad. In order to control the echo, several strategies are given as shown in this figure. Let's say the speaker is talking here to the audience, and this is the direct path, and this is the refractive path. And we know that if the refractive path to the receiver R minus with the direct path greater than 10.4 meter it will cause poor listening condition due to the echo this can be solved by adding the sound absorbing treatment on the wall here so in this case there is no more refracted sound because most of the sound energy has been absorbed by the absorbing material here Let's say the assembly material has alpha coefficient equal to 0.98. So in this case, 98% of the sound energy will be absorbed. Only 2% of it will be refracted back. So this is very small and it can be ignored. We can also direct the sound to the wall by adding the slanted surface here. So in this case, the sound will be absorbed by the carpet under the floor. We can also consider to perform the surface modulation. So in this case, diffusion of sound will happen in this surface. By doing that, the potential of echo can be reduced. Sometimes, if the room is large, we would like to add the design panel for refracting the sound. For example, in this case, so you can see there is a lot of sound refracting panel in order to refract the sound to the audience sound refracting panel in order to refract the sound to the audience far away from the stage the surface dimension of the sound refracting panel x must be greater than 4 lambda so in this case lambda is the wavelength of the sound for example, if you want to refract the musical instrument that produce the sound at 1500 Hz, so in this case, the lambda is equal to the speed of sound, which is equal to 343 meter per second, and divide with the frequency in Hz, then you should obtain the lambda equal to 0.23 meter. So we can substitute inside this formula, and then it showed you that we should obtain the sound refracting panel with the x dimension greater than 0.92 meter. By doing this, we can refract the sound for 1500 Hz. Larger sound refracting panel is needed to refract lower frequency component of sound. For example, if you want to refract a sound with 500 Hz, then in this case, the lambda is equal to 343 divided by 500, which gives you 0.684 meter. So you substitute inside this formula, multiply it with 4, then you should obtain the dimension must be greater than 2.74 meter, which is much larger compared to the previous panel. If the surface dimension of a sound diffuse panel 
is equal to lambda, then the sound will be diffused. For example, in this figure, you can see that when the sound is direct to the diffuser wall surface or the sound diffuse panel, so in this case, you can see that the sound is scattering around, which is distributed to all the directions when it hit the diffusion panel. Diffusion is an extremely important characteristic of the rooms used for musical performance, such that the listeners will have the sensation of sound surround him in such a way that the sound is coming from all the directions at equal level. You can see the example for the sound diffuse panels in these figures.